biggest gaming event of the year has come and gone with excitement, surprises, and a brand new console from Nintendo. There's a lot of mainstream stuff this year to be excited for, and you'd think there isn't as much indie stuff, right? Well, there's more indie love than you might think. Last week, I was fortunate enough to get in and see some of the awesome games that were coming out soon, or already released. But before I get into that, first things first. I'm thrilled to announce that Minecraft is making its console debut this winter exclusively on Xbox 360 and Kinect. Did this really happen? An indie game that started as an experiment by one guy making the Microsoft press conference? Regardless of how Kinect turns out with Minecraft, an indie game has become well known and recognized enough to make it to the main show at E3. Now, I don't know about you, but at least to me, this was a pretty pleasant surprise. That's what I learned at E3 this year. That the smaller companies are on the same floor as Sony and Bethesda. That they're as accepted as the larger companies out there. That they celebrate the fact that anybody from anywhere can make a strong video game and leave a great impression on the industry. And games like Minecraft and even Cave Story from the Nintendo press conference left this impression on me. I've learned this year that E3 is indeed indie as hell. Who'd have thought? So let's talk about a lot of the cool stuff that was there, starting with Microsoft. The Summer of Arcade is about to start really soon, and there I finally got to check out a game I've been clamoring to play. Bastion. An action RPG that tells the story of... Actually, I'll let Supergiant Games explain this one. The story of a kid who wakes up, his whole world's been destroyed, he knows he's supposed to go to a place called Bastion, where one's supposed to be in case of trouble, and when he gets there he finds nothing but an old man. That's the story of you and that old man trying to make sense of what happened and put the world back together. Thanks a lot, Amar. Bastion has been floating around a few indie sites with some strong hype behind it, and for good reason. It's a top-down action RPG game where you fight off enemies with several different weapons. It's a little more action-based where you have to dodge several baddies on screen using your shield to block and the appropriate tool for the right situation. It has some nice strategy for using the different weapons, and it's a pretty challenging game at that. I found myself dodging and dying quite a few times from the different attacks. The game only lets you carry a certain kind of short-range weapon, long-range weapon, and upgrade. This way it makes it a little more challenging and you have to really strategize your way through. It's a deep and involving system that I can really see skyrocketing with the rest of the game. Another big thing Bastion is well known for is having a voiceover narrator guiding you throughout the entire game. He has a kind of medieval Sin City vibe going about him, making you sound more badass as you go through. So better get ready, cause mother only knows what's out there floating on the rocks. When I first heard about the game and what it was about, I must admit I was a bit skeptical on it. I was worried it could hold the player's hands too much and say things that didn't really need to be said. But Amar actually did have an answer to this question. It was actually, it was actually one of the first mistakes we made, was that a lot of the, a lot of the lines were really observational. Um, they sort of just were telling you what you already saw, so we started to move away from that, and we do a lot more stuff that it kind of, it kind of adds a bit of an exposition, or it furthers your understanding of what might have happened in the world, or maybe gives you a piece of gameplay information, um, so that it's not strictly, strictly observational. So yeah. It's, it's sort of, the game has a lot of great variety with the enemies, challenges, and worlds, and is a drop-dead gorgeous playthrough. With just a team of seven people, it's a damn impressive looking project that seems to be garnering a lot of great attention. As for a release, it doesn't have an exact date yet, but the Summer of Arcade will start on July 20th, and it'll be in one of the five slots in the arcade promotion. Certainly one to look out for? Check them out at supergiantgames.com. Now let's talk about another game that's part of the Summer of Arcade. I think it is debatable on whether or not this counts as an indie game, because Microsoft Studios is credited with the game, but you know, this is something that really deserves some more attention. Insanely Twisted Shadow Planet is a bit of a mix between Metroid and Lunar Lander. You guide a spaceship that wanders around a surreal dark world and finds off strange creatures from a meteor that's devouring the entire planet. And like Metroid, you're wandering around looking for new weapons and tools to open up new areas and fight off enemies. After the first five minutes playing it, I was hooked. 
It works with the two analog sticks, one to guide your ship through, and the second guides your tool or weapon that you're currently using. It's a bit like a twin stick shooter where you have a different variety of weapons and tools to work with. The number of enemies on screen and how it can surround your ship really makes the game a hard challenge. And like Bastion, it's the good, fair kind of challenge. The game also has a fantastic look to it from its two developers, Michel Gagné and Joe Olson. Michel is mostly known for his work as an animator and visual effects artist for films such as The Iron Giant, Ratatouille, and The Incredibles. And the game is loosely based off his Nickelodeon shorts, Insanely Twisted Shadow Puppets. While the levels have a great amount of polish and personality to them, the cutscenes felt like I was watching a short from Fantasia. It has simple and fun gameplay, a great visual style, and personally, I think this could be a big sleeper hit this year. It's the favorite thing I've played at E3, and it's one twisted shadow planet that definitely deserves a download. Go over and check out their website to find out more. I really couldn't think of anything to say here because, well, the clip speaks for itself. Another pleasant surprise to find this year was the presence of IndieCade. IndieCade is an independent game festival that showcases some of the best and most innovative games that you can sink your teeth into. It's one of the biggest and most respected festivals of its kind. The Cade has showcased several games from Xeno Clash, The Path, Nanobots, N, and even Machinery. And it has a few of my personal favorites right here at the show. Oh, how I love the V. Also, if you're in the Culver City or Los Angeles area, come by October 6th through the 9th for their big festival with tons of great games. So let's check out a few of the awesome things they had to play right there at the show. Like Ho Hoko. This has been seen online for a while and I'm really happy to finally see an early build of the game. Basically you're this flying worm or snake and your town is mysteriously under attack. Your mission is to fly around and bring everybody to the ship so they can sail away safe with plenty of fireworks to celebrate. The creator Richard Hogg actually started as an artist before he became a game developer, and the art here is very colorful and unique. It's a lot like playing a game set in a yellow submarine world. It's a very kind of pop 60s or 70s look. The mechanics for this kind of snake rescue game are pretty standard. You can bounce off the different objects, you have a race mode available in it, and you can turn electric through these light bulbs and attack some of the cannons that are attacking the townsfolk. This is still an early version of it, and there will be more to offer. From what I heard on the floor, it's set to be released sometime next year. Another game I've heard a great deal about is Button for the PC and Xbox Live Arcade. It's kind of an interactive game where you have to put the controller down, walk a few steps back, and do as the game instructs, like silly things like shake with your partner or dance around like a robot. Then the game will start counting down, and once the countdown is over, it's a race to the other player's controllers to tap them as quickly as you can and make them lose while still defending your own control. It's a really great idea for a party game, as you can get multiple people to use one controller. Then it almost turns into a cartoon dust cloud where you're all trying to clamor for your controllers and fight each other over it. Hey, if you don't believe me, listen to some of the writers from TopTierTactics.com, like... John Griffin, I'm from Albuquerque. Yeah, I'm, uh, John Tron, uh... What's your name? John Tron, uh, from New Jersey. I'm John Griffin, I'm from Albuquerque. Oh. Heh, <laughs> confusing it with, um... Yeah. <laughs> Very uh, fun. I would like to see four players. I think the, the chaos. I'm pretty sure if I was playing with my wife, I'd end up stabbed at some point playing this game. So yeah, I like it. I think you play one more scene, you'll end up stabbed too. Thanks, Sean and John, and thank you, indie players, for watching the first part of this E3 coverage. Look out for the second part for some more IndieCade games, a few PlayStation games, and well. I get to talk to somebody you might have heard of. Hi, I'm Munch, and you're watching the Indian Searchlight.